Hello and welcome back for another video on the Entity Framework 6 in this case. Uh, we're going to be talking about dealing with views in this one. We talked about stored procedures already. We talked about getting the code already. Look in the playlist on the channel if you haven't seen those videos already as you probably want to watch them first. Uh, and always please do subscribe. We appreciate you doing that. Um, what we've got is we've got in our solution the same database. Uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to right click and you're going to want to update your solution to get the latest version of the code. And that will give you the latest because after I make this video I'll check in these changes. I'm not doing it now because people are watching these on YouTube and it will mess them up. Um, but once I'm completely finished I'll update the updated code to the SVN server and we'll go on. So views, what are they? Views are simply a read-only quote. I know you can use stored procedures to modify view data. Uh, you don't do that very often, but you can. But they are a virtual table, in essence, in SQL Server. And they're handy uh, tools because you doing reports and various things like that. There's sometimes a certain amount of data from a relational database that you want to put into a format that you're going to use over and over and over again across applications, boundaries, all kinds of things. So views are handy. So you'll see here on my server explorer that I created a view. It's called view clients. And what it is is it just grabs a list of the clients and it gets their name and the purchases. Nothing magic. So what we need to do is what? Well, same thing we always do. We need to update our model and then we're going to need to what? We're going to need to go into our code, define a sort order, and do some various other things. So let's go through it and do it now. It's really, really easy. So first, let's update our model. How do we do that? Well, first, obviously, make sure that the view is here. Um, but you're going to right click. You're going to go to your EDMX file, this customer's entity.edmx. You notice I've already done it. But you're going to right click and you're going to go to update model from database. And under the ads, it'll be under views, you'll be able to check it and bring it in and hit finish. And that'll bring this view client in. Now, something very important with views and I guess entity framework overall is. Remember it created our primary keys for us way back. Well, I normally don't harp on these warnings much but if we look we can see that one of the warnings is given us is that there was no primary key given for the view so it inferred one what did it do well it inferred every column was a primary key well that's no good so that so we need to fix that so we need to think to ourselves what is a good primary key well if we look at our definition of this view what we're pulling down is the purchase ID right well, that just happens to be the primary key of the purchase table. And we know that it's one customer to many purchases. But that purchase ID is always going to be unique, especially this inner join and the way it's written. So we can go in here and safely go into our model here, uncheck entity key, right click again, uncheck entity key, right click, I think you're getting the gist of it. And leave the ID as a key. Save. And now just take a look at the model browser. Come over here to uh, tables and views. And there's our view. And there is the key ID and everything else is non-keyed, so we're good to go. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. How do we use it? Well, you can see it in the store, and you can see just like a table, it's there, so we can assume we probably have, through IntelliSense, access to it through the context, right? CTX.ViewClients, and that would be correct. I've updated the form GUI a little bit to make it a little neater. We've still got the old stuff over here on the left. I left it. Uh, we've got the store procedure where we selected a value and executed it. Now we've got this new one down here for view. But it's very much the same thing. We've got a combo box you select where you can order it by because I wanted to show you how to sort views. 
and then an execute button where it actually does it. So let's look at the items in here. Uh, we, we could have added more, but amount, purchase, customer's ID, and purchase date. My purchase dates aren't terribly helpful because they're all midnight on the same day. But in the real world, you can imagine how that would be uh, helpful. So we've got case 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now we're not going to... I'm going to go back to my best practices here, and I'm not going to switch the text. I'm going to switch the uh, selected index. 0, 1, 2, and default. So let's go here to execute. You'll notice I put things in regions to make it easier for you to, to know what's going on. There's our using statement. We create our context. <coughs> This is a little bit new. Uh, we talked about this er earlier, though. It's, it, it's, it can be an enumerable list. It, it can be an iorderable. Uh, there's a million arguments. You can go on Google and see when to use which ones. Uh, in this case, we know we're going to uh, sort it, so the iorder queryable of type our view client, which is, well, it's our type, right? View client is each row within that result set that comes back is of type view client. We've got an iorderable, queryable list of them. All right. Don't want to beat that dead horse too long. We get into our switch statement. Hopefully, you've seen a switch statement before where we check to see the selected index. Now, in production, again, we would check, and if you didn't select something, we'd show a message box, blah, blah, blah. Not doing that here. Uh, we're just assuming they did do something not stupid. And in case zero, we're going we're gonna to go out. We're going to say, look, results is equal to, there's our... IntelliSense, I'll prove it here, dot view clients, context dot view clients dot order by value where value dot amount is the sort parameter and break. And you can imagine the rest are the same just with different amount, customer ID, purchase date. And our default, you can make this whatever you want. I chose, and I'm going to switch here because purchase date isn't incredibly helpful. I'm going to go to customer ID because of the data I know that's in my database. And then we create our buffer for the output and we go through it and using the string.formatter we show the uh, purchases in the message box. Entity framework really is amazing. So there's nothing to this. Let's go through and watch it run. We're going to select what we want to sort by. We'll go by amount first. We'll execute, and it's ascending amount. Makes sense. It's exactly what we expect. Purchase date. They're all the same date, so it just kind of did its thing. And so it works. So that's how you deal with views, people. It doesn't get any more complicated with that. I mean, you can do a interaction with the store procedure to update a view, but we're not going to cover that because we already covered how to deal with store procedures. They're easy too. You can go back and check one of my earlier videos. So let's do a quick recap. Create the view is already in the database for us because I created it for you. Uh, go to your model here. Update the model from the database by right-clicking, going to Update Model from Database. Once you do that, you're going to get a warning about the key. Uncheck all of the keys except for the one that you know is unique, which happens to be Purchase ID, because it is the primary key of the purchase table in the database. You can verify that on the model browser. You can go to Tables and Views and see what's in this View Clients, which is a new data type now for us, and it's keyed. Make sure we're good to go there. And then we know that we have access to it via IntelliSense. And that we can sort it using an iOrder queryable of type view client to sort. Hopefully you found this video helpful and useful and it can help you down the road on some of the projects you're working on. And again, like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way. And please do hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate that. Thanks for stopping by.